Joining me now, the senator in the middle of it all, budget chairman in the Senate, Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders, thank you for joining us. The, the bottom line, where do things stand now? Well, I think we're going to make real progress, and I think, Jonathan, we're going to do what the American people want us to do. And the American people are very clear. They want to substantially lower the cost of prescription drugs. They want to expand home health care so that people are not forced out of their homes into nursing homes. They want to expand Medicare so that elderly people can have dental care, can have hearing aids, can have eyeglasses. They want us to address the existential threat of climate change. And I'll tell you what else they want. They are sick and tired of the rich getting richer and not paying their fair share of taxes. And they want this reconciliation bill to be paid for by doing away with the loopholes that the wealthy and large corporations enjoy. So we have the American people very, very strongly on our side. We've got the President of the United States on our side. We've got 96 percent of the members of the Democratic caucus in the House on our side. We've got all but two senators at this point and the Democratic caucus on our side. We're going to win this thing. We're going to pass a strong infrastructure bill to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, and we're going to pass a reconciliation bill. All right, I want to get to one of those two senators that is not with you right now. Senator Sinema, as we heard Rachel Scott refer to, put out a lengthy statement overnight uh, about the failure of the House to vote on that infrastructure bill. She said, in part, the failure of the U.S. House to hold a vote on Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is inexcusable and deeply disappointing for communities across our country. Denying Americans millions of good-paying jobs, safer roads, cleaner water, more reliable electricity, and better broadband only hurts everyday families. She accuses you, Senator, and other progressives of pulling off what she calls an ineffective stunt and holding that infrastructure bill hostage uh, to the larger social infrastructure bill. Your response? Well, I think Senator Sinema is, is wrong. I think from day one, Jonathan, it has been clear, President of the United States has said it, Speaker of the House Pelosi has made it clear. A majority leader in the Senate, Schumer, has made it clear. Both of these bills are going forward in tandem. Going forward in tandem. We've got to pass them both. I voted for the infrastructure bill. It is an important bill. I'm a former mayor. I know how much we have got to address our crumbling infrastructure and create jobs there. But I also know that elderly people in this country cannot chew their food because they don't have teeth in their mouth. I know that the American people are sick and tired of paying 10 times more for prescription drugs than the people of Canada and in other countries. I know that there are young people out there who would love the opportunity to get a higher education but can't afford community college. We're going to make two years of community college tuition free. And I also know that the scientists are telling us that if we do not act boldly in terms of cutting carbon emissions, that the planet we leave in our kids and grandchildren will be increasingly uninhabitable. And let me also say this, Jonathan. We are not just taking on or dealing with Senators Manchin or Senator Sinema. We're taking on the entire ruling class of this country. Right now, the drug companies, the health, care, the health insurance companies, the fossil fuel industry are spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to prevent us from doing what the American people want. And this really is a test of whether or not American democracy can work. The Republican Party is bought and paid for by the pharmaceutical industry. They're not going to do anything. But I hope very much and I expect that the Democratic caucus and the president, I know he will, stand firm and tell the drug companies, stop ripping us off. Well, tell the insurance companies that the American people need Elderly people need dental care, hearing aids and eyeglasses. People need home health care. Our young people need so the quality me, child care that they deserve. So let me ask you about, about where the president is, is on this. As I understand it, he has now floated a $2 trillion top line number on this uh, broader bill. You are at 3.5. I remember you initially wanted closer to $6 trillion. Are you comfortable with the idea of cutting this down to about $2 trillion? No, I'm well, first of all, I'm, I'm not sure that that's accurate. As you know, there's a lot of gossip that goes on. What the president has said is that there's going to have to be some give and take, and I think that that's right. I think, if anything, Jonathan, when we especially talk about the crisis of climate change 
and the need to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel. The $6 trillion that I originally proposed was probably too little. Three and a half trillion should be a minimum. But I accept that there's going to have to be give and take. But at the end of the day, the real but okay, okay, so issue give and now, take, but 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 not two trillion dollars. That's not enough, because because the president no, also said no. that, that, that a smaller investment could create historic achievements. But you, you two trillion dollars is, is not yeah. enough. What we are, tr what the president is saying is that what we are trying to do is is for the working families of this country, for the children, for the elderly. We're trying to pass the most consequential piece of legislation since the Great Depression, and he's right. You know, so yeah. the bottom line is we have got to pass it. We've got to pass the infrastructure bill. And the American people are going to have to stand up. You know what bothers me about this whole thing? Poll after poll shows what we are doing is exactly what the American people want. It's not what the big money interest wants, not what the lobbyists wants. It's what the American people want. And we've got to do it.